I am so sorry, everyone. I should have got this podcast out yesterday. Grains and Grits took a little toll on me. I was catching up. So my apologies. It is out today. It's out Thursday. And I have to tell you about all this awesome stuff going on with our sponsors before we get going. OrcaCoolers.com. You know, they're one of our favorite people. There's tumblers. There's coolers. There's all sorts of good stuff. They are doing deals for the holidays. And when I say deals, it starts Sunday, November 14th. 14th and goes all the way until November 29th, Cyber Monday. There's going to be one deal a day. Go on and go to orcacoolers.com, click on that holiday 2021, and then make sure you also use code DAD SEASON. When you use code DAD SEASON, it is like a holiday sale all the time because you get 20% off your order. But check out all the good deals they have going for their holidays. I'm not 100% sure. I don't know if the coupon code is going to work on top of the, I, I couldn't tell you, but Use code dad season. You're going to get 20% off regularly priced items, but these holiday sales are going to be awesome. Big news for our friends at distilleryproducts.com. They now have a partnership with Mir. So not only can you get laser etched glassware, you can get laser etched tumblers. You can also get all the cool stuff that they have with the other swag. So if you want me to get you in touch with Carson, Janie, Vicky, all the good folks over at distilleryproducts.com, make sure to reach out to me. I would love to get you in touch with my friends over there. They're great people. Last but certainly not least, we have our friends over at action247.com. If you want action, get in on the action with Action247.com, Tennessee's only sports book by Tennesseans for Tennesseans. There's NFL football going on. It's Thursday night football tonight. Wager 25 bucks on the first score and get a $25 live free bet. There's hockey going on. Friday deposit bonus. Make sure you tune into Action 24-7 social media on Friday. And there's always a deposit bonus. You can also use code DADS100 in addition to the Friday deposit bonus. And they will match up to four hundred dollars your first deposit so you get their deposit then you get the dad's drinking bourbon deposit and you're looking pretty good saturdays are for college football bet fifty dollars on any ncaa football game and they will give you a 25 dollars free bet just because they love you and there's a whole flash deposit bonus going on it's going to go live sunday morning make sure you check out all the stuff sunday morning fridays they they have all these you got to just pay attention to their social use code dads 100 and they'll match up to four hundred dollars your first deposit our friends over at action 247.com Hello, hello, everyone. My name is John Edwards. With me, as always, is Zeke Baker, who did not have a cold open tonight. He went 0 for 1. He was a member of the Braves. He struck out when it really mattered. Thankfully, his Braves are coming through. But together, we make the Dad Shrinker Bourbon. Wherever you are, whatever time it is, thank you for making us part of your day. Hey, Zeke. True story. I do not like the Braves. I do not care for the Braves. I don't cheer for the Braves. Is this a problem you have with baseball altogether, or is this just... I dislike baseball greatly for numerous reasons, mainly that second strike, money for other reasons, and BS. I super dislike the Braves for having what should have been a dynasty and one of the best epic franchises ever, and they squandered it more times than anyone, easily. You can only get burnt so many times. I mean, I think the Red Sox kind of had the Braves beat for a very, very, very long time on that. I mean, that was the longest number of years without winning. But look at look at the, the that team they had. No, what you don't understand. I mean, think about who the Red Sox had. I mean, the 86 team was stacked. How would I remember 86? Were you even born in 86? I was born in 86. I was a little toddler running around. But that team was <laughs> stacked. One year? That team was stacked. They had Roger Clark. I was more than one year old. <laughs> Ish. No, I was two. At that point, I was two. Either way, I mean, Georgia sports is already synonymous with being depressive and always finding a way to lose. They epitomized it. I have since given up and written off baseball. The times I've gone to games over the years with my boys because they all love it. 
we go in like the Hank Aaron club or somewhere else. And I, I do everything I can to not watch a single pitch. Well, the problem here that you don't realize about the Red Sox is that they were up every year in August and the beginning of September, and they would find a way my whole childhood. And then that's when Clemens was there. Mo Vaughn was there. There was a lot of good people there. I mean, Wade Boggs was still on the team before he went to the Yankees. I mean, before they got to that culture of winning, they would blow it in September every single year. So you'd be all pumped during the summer. Like this is the year. This is it. This is it. And then September rolls around and they would find a way to give up their lead. So it sucked. Let's move on, Zeke. We are drinking Barrel Craft Spirits 15-year bourbon. It's known as BCS Gray Label. The barrels harvested for this release were selected for their refined properties and extraordinary flavor profile. This was 15 years old. It was distilled in Indiana, Kentucky, and Tennessee and blended together in Kentucky. So it was crafted and bottled in Kentucky at Barrel Spirits. It ended up at 100.4 proof. It was a cast strength bottling. So this is three things brought together from Indiana, Kentucky, and Tennessee ended up at 100.4. Zeke, what did you think about this whiskey? Nose-wise, organic or like an earthy, herbally tea-ish kind of product. Not like Chick-fil-A sweet tea or something. (laughs) It reminded me of also orange with a heavy clove component. And then finally, definitely wet aged wood. Palette-wise, the last of the nosing notes really um, hit me the hardest, I would say. It, it reminded me of wet oak, wet tannins, minerals. There was a spice that followed as a residual from the wet oak and the tannins as well. And that hang around for me into the finish. I didn't think the finish extended past the tongue. It was just that kind of lingering thing, but not like a hanger. There were some undertones of, you know, typical sweet notes you would expect for a bourbon whiskey, but I thought they were definitely undertones and uh, more minimal than I would really go for. And that was really uh, the basis of what I got. So the notes for me, I got like smoke and honey over popcorn and the taste, I got a lot of honey, leather and tannin. So I agree with you on that, but I did get a lot of honey. I liked the finish. I think overall, and I'm not trying to you know, dumb this down, I think there was a little bit too much of that Tennessee corn coming through in different aspects of it. Like the, I really enjoyed the mouth feel of this one. I really liked that way it coated my mouth, but at the same time, that corn was kind of present and it wasn't necessarily the the sweet corn that I would be looking for. If that's the way to describe it, it's very much like a a corn that you would expect from Tennessee whiskey that they might have sourced. It just dominates the profile a little bit on this one for me. Yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, this is the the third year they've they've done this release or the fourth? I can't remember. It started in 2018, I believe, so third year. Yeah, and I I don't precisely remember the, the previous two. I know we had them. I definitely don't feel like either one of those were quite as... Tennessee forward. No, the first one was not. I mean, the first one I really, really enjoyed. We did have some controversy there from the the sample you got. I remember getting to talk about it with Joe at Nashville Whiskey Festival. I was with James and Justin, and we absolutely loved it. That first one I, I loved. I still stand by the fact that I loved it. The second year, I don't even think we got to try last year's. Really? I thought we did. I don't know. I don't remember trying last year. No, no, no. You went and didn't you go find a sample? I don't know. Either, either way, I mean, at least from what I remember, if somebody finds the notes where we're off, I'll, I'll take it to the chin. But I feel like for these 15-year releases, it's been a more in-tune type production. And even more so, I mean, look at their batches that they've done with, you know, these three ingredients, basically. I know they don't have the age statement necessarily, but... I mean, I don't know anyone that spent more time mingling Tennessee, Indiana, Kentucky, for the most part, do a really damn good job of it. I mean, what are they up to, like 30 batches of barrel now? I think 31 is the next one that's coming out. And, I mean, we've had some batches lately that were super awesome. And I can't say enough, I really enjoyed the barrel seagrass. I know it's a rye. It's not this whiskey, but I 
really loved seagrass and that slushy that damn slushy that everybody wants the recipe of that was one of the highlights of kentucky bourbon festival for me so barrel is killing it in so many areas i think this craft spirits line is really hard first off this 15-year whiskey is commanding $250. We know 15-year Tennessee whiskey from a certain place, you could get a barrel and have that be 50 to 60 bucks a bottle. Or am I off? Is it 50 to 60 or is it a little bit more? You know this better than I do. I believe the there's some 17-year picks floating around. And granted, they're not cash shrink, but they're pretty damn close. And I think they're 60, 70 tops. Again, this is a mingling and, and has other aspects to it. But man, I, if you if you had to guess, uh, here, here's three states. Which one do you think this came from or tastes like the most? This one really points to Tennessee a lot. Well, and I think that's the problem. And it's also why a, a certain company has kind of discontinued letting their barrels get out because they realize that their 17 are going for 60 to 70 bucks and other people were taking it and putting it out at 200 200 plus i don't know i mean i just kind of think that even you look at like an old fits that is going to be ten dollars a a year i'm not saying that barrel being a blending first place being an ndp is going to be able to compete with a distillery that distills it themselves their costs are going to be down in so many other areas i understand that you have to price a little bit higher it's a tough pill to swallow though for 250 bucks when you are getting that tennessee profile I think if you were getting a different profile, I think if this is not as corn forward as it is, we're having a completely different conversation on this pour. The price is justified. Everything's okay. When you get that corn forward profile and we just think like, all right, you can go get a pick of that other stuff for 70. Yeah. And I, honestly, I mean, I knew this was not a cheap bottle, but you and I had talked offline about the price or, or what it was for this year. I, I just think in general, I would just say very confidently that of the batches we've reviewed from them in the past year, there are multiples that in a head to head, I would take those hands down. I mean, we had some really good ones in the past 12 months. I feel like what's the one we reviewed. I'm going to have to look it up. It was 20 something. 28 i thought we both liked we loved it that, with the one before that we didn't and then like one or two before was just a bang or two i mean that's the beautiful thing about barrels so don't think that we're crapping on the brand right now if you love that corn and and you know what corn we're talking about if you love that corn you're gonna love this 15 year so let's get that out of the way first the other thing I will say is that the beautiful thing about barrel is that there's so many different batches that you never know what's going to go on. We love 28 and we also love 24. I'm not sure we loved 20. It was 20 and 21, but there was one that we liked out of those and one that we didn't. I'm trying to yeah. remember. It, it came out with 28. Like we had two and one that we thought was just wow. And one like, oof. but whatever, I guess they're tinkering still. But that's the thing. Every single blend is going to be different. Every single batch is going to be different for them. And I love that they're taking all those variables and they're putting them together. And there's blends like that that you're not even noticing that Tennessee is involved. I'm, I mean, I remember I still have, I had like a batch four and a batch five of barrel. And you think of where they've come in such a short amount of time. I love what they're doing. They have the whole Stellum thing going on now. So I'm trying to get them on to talk about it too. The only problem is I can't get them to stay up past when we put the kids to bed, which <laughs> is a little problem. So I'm trying to work out that scheduling to have Joe or somebody else on from barrel and, and talk a little bit more about their stuff. But I will say if they listen to this, just because we didn't like this one doesn't mean that there aren't a bunch of barrel products that we do like well, yeah if you want to go way way back they were the first ones to drop light whiskey yeah remember i crushed those things <laughs> and think about the other thing i mean i remember the first time we had the barrel rye and we loved that barrel rye i think we put it up against thomas h handy and some other stuff in a blind i mean way back in the day that's how much we liked that rye yeah i, I would definitely love to hear um you know the thought process behind each blend and if there's a goal or let's just see what happens or you know they they rank pretty high on the, the the minds and that i would like to pick as far as all right so when you go into the lab or whatever you want to call it what what's your game plan and, and then you know how do you know when you're done 
I totally agree with that. I mean, that's the one question we ask all the time. It's like, how do you know you're done? And when do you know when it's like, I've done everything I can. It's just time to walk away. That is a huge question I have for them. Zeke, I I think for this one, I think it's one you have to try. This is one of the ones every year that I put I put on my list of ones I, I want to try every year. I would just say that uh, this year it's a little more corn forward. That's all I'll say. Maybe it is more of, th- I mean, this is a bar for me. I would say try it, see what you think about it. If you like that profile, go ahead and get a bottle of it. Go try to find it. But if you don't, I understand that too. Same here. And I think I would say if if you are curious about the barrel brand, uh, look back through the catalog. Again, we've we've done more than um, you know a few batches at this point that we've reviewed. And at least if you want to hear some of the ones that John and I really uh, dove into headfirst and enjoyed, those are out there, uh, probably still available on the shelf, depending on your market and whatnot. And I, I think if you're looking to jump into barrel, at least, and you were going to ask John or I where to go, we would tell you one of those releases. Hundred percent. While you're looking for those, go ahead and find us on Facebook at Dad's Drinking Bourbon, Twitter at Bourbon Dads, Instagram at Dad's Drinking Bourbon. Thank you again to Barrel for sending us over this media sample. Thank you for finding our podcast. Please leave us an open and honest review, just like we leave open and honest reviews about the whiskey we drink. Zeke, where else can the folks find us? Nashville, Tennessee. Cheers. Ciao.